Hey everyone, I'm Erin Saxton, that girl from Jersey, and you are here for another episode of the show, and I'm so glad you made a decision and came back and watched us. Thank you so much. So back again is Kate Butler. Kate, you probably saw her on our first show, is a best-selling author. She's a book publisher, so she creates tons of best-selling authors. She has a new book out called Women Who Illuminate, and they're just rocking it and climbing up and staying there, the bestseller status. And they have a new, she has a new book coming out, Women Who Rise, and they're working on that. You're a mom, you're an author, you're a speaker. Did I cover it? Yes. You're like much. a transcended soul from God <laughs> himself or herself. Sorry, who am I to offend anyone? Um, but I promised myself when we first talked, so welcome, by the way. Thank you. I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for having me. Um, it's a, it's a pleasure. And one of the times when we were last together, I said, next time you're on the show, I want to talk about purpose and it's a big topic. So I'm going to dedicate our whole time to Mm -hmm. this topic. If my dog doesn't show, (laughs) we're going to show. (laughs) So I have dogs here and we'll probably edit all that part out, but that's fine. (laughs) Just in case. Just in case. Yeah. That's fine. Makes it fun. you know, we always talk about figuring out what you want to do in life and are we on the wrong path and what should we do and this and that. And every once in a while you hear people say, um, well, they just, they don't know what they're supposed to be doing or their soul's unhappy or they're just, they haven't had the right passion or purpose. Mm -hmm. Walk me through all that. Wow. Yeah. So it is a big topic. Um, and where I tell people to begin is to dream. And I use the word dream as an acronym. Um, and the D really begins with starting to dream again, like you did when you were a child, right? And then it's releasing anything that isn't serving you. It's embracing the dream. Once you can allow it to come in and you have the space for it, it's taking action on what shows up for you. And then it's creating a morning ritual to do it all again, all over each and every day, because it's a practice to follow your dream and to follow your purpose. Um, So that's really where I begin with people from a high level, you know, but breaking that down, it's really important to begin to identify what in life lights me up. What do, what am I excited to do? What have I always wanted to do that I didn't try? What am I innately good at? Everyone has what I call, you know, you're using the word purpose, which is beautiful. And most people can identify with that. But I really look at it as everyone has a certain unique brilliance inside of them, like a unique brilliance that only they have. And so when we do not allow ourselves to show our brilliance or use our brilliance or tap into our brilliance, the world will literally never experience that type of brilliance in the world. It only exists with us and it will never exist again. Wow. And so that is really where to begin by allowing yourself to own your brilliance and dream about what could this look like when all things were possible. And this is really where I began when I said I would begin to dream and then I would edit myself. I'd pull back. I'd say, well, I really want that, but I don't have the money to do that right now. Mm -hmm. Or I really want to do that, but I have two brand new little kids. I have a toddler and an infant. So that absolutely is impossible for me. It's good for you, but it's not good for me, right? So we start to edit our dreams in all these different ways. But if we kind of pull back for, and that's where the where part of the release comes in, none of that is serving you. None of those thoughts are serving you in your dreams. They're not supporting you in getting further along in the path. And so we can really say, if all the money was possible, what would it look like? Let's just play for a minute. Sure. So I would I always tell you, I'm not asking you to buy a ticket to Fiji right now, but if you want to go to Fiji, can we talk about it? Can we play there for a little while? You don't actually have to do anything yet, right? But let's just play there. When all the resources are possible, when all the time is possible, when you have all of the support you need and all the logistical things are taken care of, now let you dream. So when it's all possible, what does it begin to look like? And that's really the place to start. And you begin to play there. And it's amazing what begins to show up when you allow yourself to go there. Can we do it a little bit? Mm -hmm. Do you mind? Oh, no, I love it. One, I'm not sure if I know my purpose, Mm -hmm. which is funny Mm -hmm. because you would think I would. But Mm -hmm. I really don't. There's not everybody has it all together. And I absolutely am the walking billboard of proof of I don't. I just videotape life as I'm experiencing it. Mm-hmm. Right? I love that. Show. So 
I think people watching will really say, well, I wonder what my purpose is. So just dreaming about what could be possible, is that an exercise? Is that, like, I have a pen mm -hmm. and I have some paper. Mm -hmm. Like, do I need to, like, write anything down? Or how, let's walk me through at least the dreaming part of it. Yes. Like, what is that? How do I begin to dream? So what did you always dream about when you were a child? What did you where did you dream of going? What did you dream of doing? What did you dream of becoming? Who did you dream of doing it with? What did that look like? I wanted to be a Barker's Beauty or a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. I love it. And I really wanted to be um, meeting a lot of the public. Mm -hmm. For what reason, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that, well... Bob Barker and, you know, I like cheeseburgers and those slinky dresses, so that wasn't going to work. So I guess I need to release that, but I'm positive now that I, you know, I need to release that weight more so than any. But um, as I grew up, I realized that wasn't really the best fit. <laughs> Dallas Calvert Cheerley, I mean, they're lovely, but that's, but that's where it was. I was always dreaming about that, and then I grew into being a newscaster. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm going to challenge you a little bit on this. Please, to this say is what that this is all about. I don't, um, I'm not necessarily buying the fact that you didn't know why you wanted to do that, right? So, well, just saying you want to be famous, I don't think is a good answer. Okay. So was it because they sparkled? Was it because you they had so much fun doing it? Was it because they could connect and make the audience happy? Like this? Oh, I see. Good, mm. good. Okay. I like, <laughs> I like this. You know, for, for, Price is Right for me, for Barker's Beauties, is they were always making somebody happy. They were revealing what could be possible. Right. <gasps> ah! <laughs> is this oh, awesome? this fun? Yeah. Yeah. Is this, I mean, anybody else feeling this? Like, right? <laughs> so they were revealing what could be possible. Right. I mean, it was mostly kitchen appliances and new cars. But at the point, those people you could tell really needed that. They really needed a new washer. Yes. I'm not saying they were poor, but you kind of thought... If they had all the money, that's not how they were going to spend it. Yes. And there was this Barker's Beauty in this glittery, sparkly dress, which was great. Yes. But revealing what could be possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I just got truth bumps all over. So when I have truth those. Truth bumps, not yes. goose bumps. <laughs> truth bumps. Yes, it means the truth is coming through. So, um, so that begins to give you an indication as to what you're here to do, how you're here to serve, right? Mm -hmm. And helping people reveal what is possible, which is absolutely what you are doing today. And you can do that in so many different ways, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. So for example, I always loved to write, right? So I, when I was younger, I would um, always like to write in my journal. When I would meet someone, I would be sure to get their address so we could be pen pals. Um, I thought I would r grow up and write called cards for Hallmark because I love to make people feel joyful through the written word, right? Wow. Yeah. So, and it turns out that I am a publisher and I'm an author and I'm doing that in a very different way. So it, it never looks exactly like we thought it would look, right? But if I trace this back, I can say, oh, I, I always did love to write. And the reason I love to write is because although I can communicate verbally with people, when I write to people, I know that I can directly connect with your heart. Mm -hmm. I'm very clear on that. And I know how my words can inspire and impact other people. And so that was what really lit me up is because I knew I was making a difference in people's lives by what I was communicating to them uh, through the written word. So it translates into what I'm doing today if you trace it back. So you yeah. can really do that if you allow yourself to, again, the first step is to really dream again. What were those dreams and what are they now? So now they're taking different form, but you go through the same process now when it's all possible. If I could be showing people in the most magnificent way what could be possible in their life, what would that look like when all things are supporting me, right? right. So you start there. That's amazing. I love that. What about the people that aren't sure what they dreamed about when they were little? They're just closed off to it. How do you break through to them? Mm -hmm. So uh, again, I would challenge you because that's what I do. Yes. <laughs> and because um, well, there's naysayers yes. at home. Of I course, hear them. always. Don't you hear them right now? Stop. I'm covering <laughs> it. <laughs> right. I I, so, I understand. Right. So um, 
understanding that not everyone is open to receiving that. So first of all, uh, getting to a place where you are at least at the awareness or the acceptance level that you really truly were born with every answer you need for you. Okay. So everyone was born with their path. Everyone was born with all the answers. Um, and, allowing yourself to know that that's possible for you really is the first step. Because if you don't believe that you will be guided in the right direction and, and you don't believe that you can trust your intuition and trust yourself, um, then it's going to be difficult to tap into that dreaming place, right? So yeah. the first step is really getting to, to that stage. Um, and you can do this by playing. So how do we break that? Mm -hmm. Let's play a little bit, right? So try, I always say, start for seven days, right? Start journaling for seven days and say, if I had three wishes today and they were all going to come true, what would I wish for today? Interesting. Right? Um, and you do this for seven days and you just begin to unedited, right? Mm -hmm. Uncensoring, which we do to ourselves so often, just allow the words to flow through. Um, and if you love how you feel after you're doing that, you renew it and then you re renew for another seven days and slowly, but surely now we've gotten through a month and now this will take you to a new level. You will surely have broken through the wall if you've committed to doing this exercise for, you know, seven days and then turning into 30. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love that. Even too, like for the people that are, well, I didn't dream, like everyone always is asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Everyone always has always There's had a moments, vision right? of, and again, so what I originally asked was, and you took it to what did I want to be, right? Because you mm -hmm. did have a clear vision of that. Mm -hmm. But I said, where did you want to go, right? So I always dreamed of going to California. It turned out that that was where I met my husband. It turned out that that was where I met the person who would be a pivotal piece in my coaching business, mm -hmm. which would be my third kind of career choice along the way, right? Um, and, and this was many, many years later, this person would show up for me again. And so all of these different um, beautiful seeds that were planted in California that turned into such crucial pieces in my life, uh, it never would have happened had I not followed that intuition and gone there. So it's where have you always wanted to go? What have you always wanted to try? <laughs> or what did you always, what have you wanted to try? I, <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to go to Florida and I did, but I'm like, what's in Florida? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just don't know, right? Had I gone, mm -hmm. I would have known. Well, I, I, I didn't know what, yeah, we don't know what it holds for us. And it's never what it would, it's never what we think it will look like. Right. Ever. So yeah. think of what we have accomplished in our life. And when we set out to do that, we had an idea in our mind of how we were going to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. It looked like this, 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 and this, and then I was going to get that. Right. Right. And so did it look like it? maybe a little bit along the way, but generally speaking, we go like this, you know, and for those of you who can't see me, I am taking a very, um, winding path, right? To get from point A to point B. And we still get there, right? But along the way, we're like, oh, I'm making a wrong turn over here. Oh, now I'm back on the path. Now I'm taking another wrong turn. Now I'm back on the path. So we take all these wrong turns along, wrong turns along the way, not necessarily. Um, we, if we're still moving forward, if we're still getting to point B, then we're, we're, growing. Mm -hmm. So we're accomplishing. Um, but at the same time, it's never what we think it's going to look like. Right. So if we have that dream as our point B of where we want to go to, and we have a clear vision of what that looks like, if we release the fact that we're doing it incorrectly along the way, and we continue to move forward and take action on those things, then we will eventually get there. So is when we talk about D dream mm -hmm. and I just said to show people what's possible, is that my life's purpose? It, so I believe that we have several life's missions, okay. you know, soul missions within our lifetime. Um, some people have one life purpose. This is what they're here to do. And that's amazing when people know that, you know, for example, you know, these, um, you know, child prodigies that, you know, pick up a violin and they're two years old and they can, you know, play anything, uh, you know, that would blow us away. You know what I mean? Like any piece of music, right? Um, that it is going to be probably their life purpose. And they know that innately from the time they were born. I think that's amazing. That was not my path. <laughs> I took a lot of those, you know, you know, winding paths to get to a Chopsticks place where, the piano. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. And so, um, there was a lot of things that came up along the way. And for me, it was stepping stones. Mm -hmm. um, and there were stepping stones that felt that I wasn't in the right place. So I had to redirect until I was stepping into a place that felt 
more aligned and it felt good to me. Um, when I say things feel good, so a lot of times people will challenge me on that and saying like, well, you know, like I feel good when I party and I feel good when I do this or uh, that, right? And yeah. so that makes me feel good, but that's not necessarily good for me. And that's the entire key. Things that make you feel good that are, that are adding to your wellness and your benefit and your life, right? So if it's taking away from your life, then it's probably, you know, it's something we want to do in moderation, obviously, but that's not what we're talking about exactly. here. We're talking about, you know, really taking these, these steps in the right direction of our path. What does it look like when you're not in your life's purpose? Well, I think that can look like a lot of different things. Um, I think that uh, it can look like guilt. Mm. I think it can look like sadness and depression. That's what it was for me. Well, it was both of those things for me. Um, it can look like uh, boredom. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it can look like uh, anger also and resentment. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those low vibe feelings that nobody wants to feel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so then, okay, so we go through the process. We release it. We What's E? E is embracing it. So okay. here, so it's when you are in a position where you're feeling like I'm, I'm in the process of identifying my life purpose. Okay. Um, and so also understanding that it's, if it's a mission, let's talk about it in that way. Let's sure. chunk it, chunk it down if you will. Right. So if you have a mission, so you're starting to say, okay, I did dream about this one thing. So what's, what is something I could do now to begin to fulfill that? Right. So if I wanted to be a writer for Hallmark, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I can start applying. <laughs> like that could be one thing I could do, but maybe I could also just begin to get into the habit of sending cards to my friends again, right? Okay. Um, and, and so what are some things that you can do to begin to start to take you know, some action on that dream? Um, but the releasing is allowing yourself to let go of the thoughts that are gonna talk you out of it. Right. So what we want to do is stay comfortable. Following our dream is uncomfortable. If it was comfortable, we would have already done it, True. right? Very good and point. so we want to stay where we are because we know this. It might not be ha happy. It might not be peaceful. It might not be fulfilling, but we know it. We're, we're good friends with it. Yeah. We've sat with it for a long time now. So at least I know what to expect, right? right? It's like when you don't want to break up with your boyfriend. Yeah. You're like, well, I mean, you know, he doesn't treat me the best, but he's good on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So, you know, as long as I can get to next Tuesday. And Thursday's time. Right? right? Yeah. Exactly. So we, we just stick with it because it's what we know. And we don't know if there's something better out there. And it's that risk, right? Well, I always say I'm comfortable being uncomfortable mm. when, I, when I'm interviewing and I'm asking questions because I'll ask questions and there's that silence sometimes. Mm -hmm. like we're doing good, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, yeah. but there's, there's some tough ones. And it's not because... It was a bad question. Yeah. It was just a tough, it's a tough one to answer. Sure. And so in that, I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. But in everything else, mm. we don't like to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So we try to do anything to divert it. Like we talked about earlier with the vibration, vibrational tone in our first episode. Like mm -hmm. we talked about like when we meditate, we have, we keep, we're trying to keep a higher vibration, right? And so if it's, there's a disconnect, mm -hmm. you might stop meditating just because your partner, you want to go back to like it's your comfy pair of jeans, absolutely, which are two sizes too big for you. Mm -hmm. The jeans that fit you are going to like cut you in on your side, like the pants I'm wearing right now. Right. <laughs> no, after a meal, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. They're just, they're just, you know, you're wearing those jeans. Right. When you're wearing like your two sizes too big jeans, heck, you could just lounge around and go to sleep and then they're that comfortable. So you don't you don't want to yes. settle into that kind of life because I don't think much gets accomplished when you're wearing jeans too big. Well, also, if everyone just folds their hands, right? So everybody listening or, you know, everybody with us watching. So if everyone can just fold their hands, okay. right? And that feels like you know, this, we've done this a million times, right. right? We're comfortable here. So then if you separate your hands and move, move one hand, one finger up, right? Mm -hmm. So you're now folding again, but you're one finger up now. Yes. Okay. That so how does weird. it feel so weird? Yes. It feels different. A little odd. A little odd. Not terrible. Not the worst thing we've ever done. We're alive. We're still living. It feels uncomfortable. It's not what we would normally do. It's, right. you know, um, but if we sit here for another couple of minutes, 
then this will start to become comfortable for us. Mm -hmm. We will forget that it's weird and uncomfortable and doesn't feel normal, right? Because this will actually become our, our new norm, oh. right? And then we can actually move it up another finger. And that feels even a little bit more strange because I have two fingers down here that aren't connected to anything yeah, now. They're like lonely. They're totally lonely. Yes. <laughs> but again, if we sit here for another couple of minutes, this will become our new our new norm, right? So we can keep growing. So we can ease up one step at a time. And although it's a little bit uncomfortable at first, we don't have to take the leap from this mountaintop to this mountaintop. You know, right. we don't have to take this huge leap. We can we can move it one step at a time, be a little bit uncomfortable until that small shifts. Absolutely. Until that settles and then begin to gradually go from there. Right. But it's releasing those things along the way that we were talking about that are pulling you down. Those anchors, mm -hmm. those anchors can be people. Those anchors can be your environment. Those anchors can be a job. Right. Those anchors can be a lot of times what you're telling yourself. And that's the most important thing. Interesting. Talk a little more about that. Well, we know our thoughts become things, period. And so what you are, it's not what you say you want that happens. It's what you focus on that shows up in your life. Right. Law so, of attraction. Absolutely. So I can tell you that I'm going to get in shape. <laughs> but if, if what I am thinking about is that I don't want to spend time going to Whole Foods. I don't want to cook new recipes. I just want to things to be easy and simple right now. Um, and that's not really where my focus is. Then what's, what is going to show up in my life is the fact that I am not following through on what I say I want. You know, it's, right. it's so you really what I'm focusing thing, but on. But your actions are so, saying something different. Right. Or I'm telling myself, you know what? You tried that diet last time and it didn't work. Or, you know, you are not a runner. So don't even try for a marathon. Or, you know, you, you know, working out sucks. So exactly. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Right. So I'm telling myself all these contrary things to I want to get in shape. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, I'm, I'm always making fun of myself mm -hmm. with, well, just pretty much everything, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, you know, in theory, I don't want, I do want to be thinner. Mm -hmm. In theory, I absolutely want to be healthier. I, I have, I have making, been making really good strides with my health mm -hmm. and I do now work out with a trainer four times a week. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Amazing. But I still like to joke about it. So that's a really interesting, I'm glad you brought that up. So, um, it's how you feel about your language when you're saying it also. Okay. Right. So for example, um, over the summer I had sold my house in the beginning of June and we didn't move into our new house until August. Mm. And over the summer I would joke with my community, like we're homeless, we're spending the week in Aruba now, and now we're spending the week in Florida and now we're beach hopping over here. And we were just going everywhere. And I was joking the whole time that we were homeless. And one of my community members challenged me and said, what you teach us is that your language will create your environment. Oh. And what you are saying is that you're homeless. And I said, as much as I appreciate that, I'm saying it in jest. Right. And I feel so free about the fact that I'm homeless. Like, I'm joking when I say that, but I actually feel really free about the fact that I can say it. Right. Literally, I love just it. Not, and yes. also not the negative con connotation or the right. struggle. You just didn't have a home at that moment. Right. It's a, it's, and I love that. They, I love where she was trying to go. Absolutely. But, yes. Any, Absolutely. Anybody who's followed yes. you, there's been such joy and bliss about yes. this whole process. Yes. And then on the day you closed your house, like yes. that was fun too. Yes. And now you get to organize and decorate and right. have all that fun. But this summer has been frolicking and light mm -hmm. and fairy for you, you know, mm -hmm. like, yes. um, certainly not. So yeah, you're right. Because how I say, I think I'm more openly joking about not liking to exercise because I'm actually exercising now. Right, exactly. Right, so I'm so actually feel in motion it. with it, and my mm -hmm. trainer absolutely laughs at me. Mm -hmm. But I'm there. Yes. You know, but once I'm in the session, I'm not complaining anymore, and yes. I feel great after I'm done. But it's fun because, well, I don't like the whole like I work out and I'm great and da da. Like it's just not me. Right. Exactly. So, so yeah. you're in alignment with who you are and you feel good about what you're saying. I'm fine with it. But we have to remember that everything that we see, everything in this world was created twice, right? So this mug right here, okay? So somebody thought to create a coffee mug and they thought about it in this shape and then they thought to put 
this amazing that girl from Jersey logo on here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought about it first and then it became a creation. So every single thing that we see was created twice, first in our mind and then it became an action and then it was created in reality. So if we think of it, about this in, in the power of it, so thinking something is to the first power, if you will, right. okay? Writing it down and solidifying it as almost like a contract with the universe, if you will, is to the second power. And then speaking it is to the third power. So if you really want to be release something and then in, intentionally invite something else in, this is the most powerful way to do it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that your thoughts are aligning with what you're saying and that you're also writing it down to you are then at that point thinking it mm -hmm. and then you're seeing it and you're actually touching it as well. And when you're speaking it, you're hearing it. So now we are incorporating all of the senses also. So that's a really effective way to get you onto uh, the path of embracing your dream and then taking action. That's great. And I'm assuming you already do this with your girls. Yes. So I do, do they already know what their dream is? And I have to be really careful about what I say because my Bella will say, um, let's do an exercise. So she'll okay. say, um, can you pick up your pen? Can you? Pick I it up. Can. Okay, yeah. so pick up your pen. So then put your pen down and now try to pick up your pen. It's confusing, right? Because there's right. no such thing as try. You either do or you don't. Okay. Right. So when whenever I say in life, like, oh, we're going to, can mommy, can we um, go to the mall today? I'm, I'm really going to try. There's no such thing as try, right? So I do this with all of my girls, like, but it, it becomes really interesting as a mom. Right. <laughs> Super fun. But yes. So with, with my son, he's 14. Do I do the dare to dream? Do I do the dream exercise with him now? I mean, his dreams are for the mission, right? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so is that, are they too young to do that or they're never too young or it's never too old to start or not? What am I saying? <laughs> it's both actually. Right. It's absolutely both because most people feel like they have chosen one way and this is it for them. Mm. Like that's, that's really great that you knew what you wanted to be and that you found your purpose early on and that you've accomplished all of these things. But my ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit too old now. I think my oldest author has been, I want to say 76. Okay. okay? Um, my youngest author that I partner with was my daughter, Bella, when we co-wrote a book together when she was five years old. So at five years old, she became a number one best-selling author. She didn't even know what was going on. Okay. <laughs> like all she knew is that she had this story and she shared it with me. And I said, that's amazing. Can we use your idea in a book? Um, and now we go and speak all over and we go to schools and do She's assemblies, amazing. right? And she, you were at my event when she came up on stage and she just took the mic out of my hand. Amazing. I was like, okay, go yeah. ahead. She was like, I Not got her. this. She, I got this, yeah. mom. She was just so excited. She's amazing. And um, it's to show that you are never too young and you're never too old to start. We cannot live our life in what happened yesterday, who we were yesterday, and the decisions that we made yesterday, right? right? We have to start right here, right now, and decide. Every day is a new opportunity to make a choice. Every day is an opportunity to create a new dream. Every day is a new opportunity to take a new action, right? And so we begin right here. Every day, we begin right here with the power of that choice. That's where our thoughts become so powerful, right? It's not what happens to us in our life because things will always be happening in life the challenges will always be there. So when the challenges come, what am I what am I deciding about that challenge, right? And when we understand that our reaction to this situation is where my power lies, this is when life becomes really magical, quite frankly, right? Yeah. Because if I'm allowing life to happen to me and I'm just going with the flow, then you know, I'm going to have good days and I'm going to have bad days. Sure. But as events happen to me, if I say I'm going to choose how I react to this and then in turn change the outcome, now I'm starting to co-create with life and I have some control over these wonderful things that are creating opportunity for me. It's like we all get a fresh start. Every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. And Every actually day. within the day also. So True. don't let an entire day go by if you have a bad morning by saying I'm having a bad day. I love that. Right? We're going to end on that because I just really think that's powerful. And mm -hmm. I've never thought that before. Thanks, Kate, for being You're here. You're welcome. How can everyone get in touch with you and find you and maybe be one of your authors or come to one of your conferences? Absolutely. So Kate Butler Books on social media and katebutlerbooks.com on my website.
And remember, there's no trying. So you either do it or don't talk about it. <laughs> Thanks for every, everybody. Have a great night. Bye.